Hey there guys, Matthew George here with FreeCCNAWorkbook.com and in this video I'll be discussing Lab 1-6 which is Basic Graphic Network Simulator Version 3 Configuration. Now first off I have to mention GNS3 is a fantastic training program and it is amazing to use when you're doing testing for configurations for a production environment. However, it is not for a production environment. So before you get any bright ideas and tell your boss like, hey let's put a uh, a dynamic simulated 7200 in the network, you know, because we can't afford a real 7200. Yeah, if you do that, you might want to start updating your resume because uh, GNS3 is, I mean, Dynamips, the hardware engine that runs under GNS3, is not very stable for one. And and second off, you know, running iOS virtually on Dynamips in a production network is technically illegal, meaning you cannot do it from a Cisco standpoint. Because when you do that, you actually violate the agreement for the Cisco IOS software. Anyway, with that being said, just figured I'd throw that out there. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, lab objectives is simple for this lab. Just verify the test uh, path and variables for GNS3 are functioning correctly. And configure the 3725 and the 3640 platforms to use 128 meg of RAM. You can use 256 megs of RAM if you have it. Uh, however, these platforms will run, will run on 128 megs. Now, these are the two particular platforms that will be used in the version 2 topology of the free CCNA workbook. So, practically what I'm doing in this video is I will be demonstrating how to prepare GNS3 so that way you can import the free CCNA uh, workbook GNS3 topology so you can use the entire workbook. So, anyway, with that said, if you completed the previous lab, 1-5, you should have a fresh installation of GNS3. So with that, if, if you've done that, it's great. If not, go ahead and install it. You can download it and install it, but I have a fresh installation here, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire it up. And if it is a fresh install, it should pop up with a nice little box window, the setup wizard here with step 1 and step 2. Step 1 is to test the path to Dynamics and check and make sure the working directories are valid. So just go ahead and click on the number one here and drop down to Dynamips and click test. And if the test is successful, you should see Dynamips successfully started. That is exactly what you want to see. So uh, if you need to change the working directory, you can. It is purely your preference. It's whatever you want. If you're more interested in the other functionalities of GNS3, such as QMU, which uh, allows you to emulate the PICS and Juniper operating system as well as ASA and IDX, I mean IDS, intrusion detection systems uh, such as the Cisco IPS uh, software. Anyhow, uh, just go ahead and click OK on this, exit out of that. Now it's time to add the, the one or more uncompressed iOS images. Now, the images here that are required by the free CCNA workbook is listed here. You don't have to have these exact images, you just have to have a feature set that matches this. So I have these exact images on my desktop that I've already pre-downloaded from the Cisco website. Keep in mind you must have a valid CCO and a valid SmartNet contract uh, to download these images. If you do not have that, you can use Google to look for these images, to just type in the image names and you'll be surprised how many FTP servers or links to RapidShare and you know all those other file sharing websites that you will find regarding these images here. So, in a nutshell, you want to extract these images. If uh, in a previous video I discuss how these images are compressed, uh, typically the images are compressed using a zip format. So, what you can do is you can use WinRAR. You can download WinRAR from the website. Just open it with WinRAR and you can drag and drop the image out of the archive here onto the desktop. And la -da 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 -da, you can rename this image here. Basically I like to keep the same image name and I like to add .ext.bin so that way it stands for extracted. So, so that one there is finished. Yeah. Go away, dang it. Go ahead and do the same thing to the 3640 image. Open it with WinRAR, drag and drop. Exit out of that. You can rename that. Keep the same name. And add.ext to it. So that way, um, 
C3640 JK903S slash MZ124 13A dot ext dot bin, which like I said basically stands for extracted. It's an easy way to know whether or not an image has been extracted or not. So now we're going to create a folder in the GNS folder. So let me go ahead and navigate to that. GNS3, right click here, go to new and type in a name, images, and we will drag and drop that over. Now that those are in there, just be sure to copy the, uh, the shortcut here, the path to the folder. It makes it a lot easier when configuring it. So now click on step number two and drop this down to 3725, increase it to 128 mega RAM. And the image file that you'll be using, oh, what do you know? It actually did it right the first time. <laughs> uh, but typically this would start in the temp folder. So if that's the case, just navigate to the program files, GNS3 and then images. And this is the 3725 platform. So just double click that and click save. And that image has been loaded. Now it's time to add the 3640 image. So drop it down to 3600 and 3640. 128 mega RAM and you change the image file, 3640. Save that and now those are completed. So in a nutshell, you've completed the basics required. Uh, however, I'll go a step further and demonstrate how you can just fire up a simple router real fast for testing. Uh, since we have the 3725 configured, just take the 3700 and drag and drop it out here on the uh, the window, I don't know whatever you want to call this right here. Just drag it and drop it out here. <laughs> and right click on it and click start. And it's going to take it a second. Oh man. I'm thinking this did exactly what I, oh no it didn't. I thought it was going to lock up on me, but I guess it's just my slow computer. So now that it has started, you can right click on it and click console. And hopefully it works as, there we go. Working as expected. So basically GNS3, like I said in the previous video, is a graphical user interface that lays on top of Dynamips, which is the hardware emulator engine. It emulates the processors and the platforms for the Cisco iOS. And basically, Dynamics loads the real Cisco iOS image. So that way, is as if you're configuring a real Cisco router. You can do a show version here, and you can actually see, you know, hey, this is a 3725. Uh, the processor is an R7000 CPU, 240 megahertz. It's completely hardware emulated. Has the red interfaces. And you can see that. Let me drag this out a little bit further. So by default, it just has two fast Ethernet interfaces because it's part of the, uh, the platform. It's part of the back plane. Uh, however, you can add additional interfaces to it if you want. I'm going to go ahead and stop it, and I'll show you how to do that real fast. You have to stop the router before you can do this. Otherwise, it will not allow you to do it. Uh, but after stopped, go to uh, no configuration. Just right-click it, configure, router 1, and go over to slots and you can select exactly what module you want in slot. So slot one, if I want a network module 4T, which gives you four serialized T1 interfaces, or you can add an additional fast Ethernet port or network analysis module. Uh, I'll just go with the network module 4T, click OK, right click it, start it back up. And after it has started, I'll right click it again, go to console, wait for it to boot, There we go. And as you can see here, now that I placed that network module in the platform, it now has four new serial interfaces. And we can do that by, we can verify that by doing show IP interface brief, or you can do show diag. And it will actually show you that, hey, in slot one, there is a 4T port adapter. And if you do a show run, you'll be able to see the four serialized interfaces. Uh, label serial one slash zero through serial one slash three, as you see here. So, 
I think that covers the majority of what I am going to demonstrate in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post a question down here at the bottom of the, uh, the lab page. Keep in mind, my responses will be in blue. So, Also, be sure to join the Facebook page, uh, so that way when I post updates on Facebook, you will get a notification, as well as YouTube channel. If you join the YouTube channel, whenever I post new videos, you will get an email saying, hey, this guy just posted a new video. Go check it out, because it's totally awesome. Anyhow, so hopefully this video has been educational for you, and thank you for viewing.